Hello, welcome back. In the last video, we learned fundamentals of performance result analysis. Right? And there we discussed the three kinds of analysis that we do on virtual users, on response time, and on the resource uses. Out of these three analysis, response time analysis is very important. So my goal in this video is to, uh, to dig deep into the response time analysis and figure out a couple of mistakes and results. So here's a sample result set that you are given for, uh, for reporting. Like, you know, in, in the set one, we have, uh, like, you know, the way that we are doing, we are sending 20 requests. Okay, so we are sending 20 web requests. And for each web request, we are getting what is a time taken to serve it from server. So that means if this is the client C1, so client C1 is sending to a server let's say S1, 20 web request. And let's call the request at T1, T2, up to T20. Okay, so 20 transactions. And each of the transaction takes some time. Let's say, for example, say five seconds, three seconds, and so on. And then this is data set one. Similarly, another client C2 sending to another server S2, same 20 request and and collect the response time for those requests and then in this table we are summarizing everything what about this 20 data sets we got what is the minimum value what is the average value what is the max median and mode okay and this is for set one similarly this is for set two and another set for set three for data so so this is a data that this is a summarized data that you are saying so here's a question. What is your conclusion? So let's say our our response time target, like you know, whenever we set the performance exit criteria, we say that the average response time should be below three seconds. So if that is the case, then don't you think that all these results are good? That means all of them have an average time below three seconds. Okay, and also if you see their median also three seconds and then even mode also less than three seconds. So the question here is, what is your conclusion? By seeing this report, do you say that all these three results are satisfying the performance acceptance criteria of average response time less than or equal to three seconds? What I like to know next, I like to know, show me the individual response time. Okay, so this is the average. So can you show me the detailed response time of all this data set? So that is, this is what, what we have. This is set one, this is two, and this is three. Okay, so if you look at this data set, okay, so this is for set one, and this is for set two, and this is for set three. So. Well, like, you know, our average response time, our response time that, that we, 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 we gave is that should be less than three seconds. So if that is the case, then this request satisfied that. This is satisfying that. This is satisfying, this is satisfying, this is not satisfying. This is not satisfying, this is not satisfying, this is not satisfying. This is not satisfying. Similarly, in set two, all these things are satisfying and these things are not satisfying. Okay? And similarly, in case of set three, all these things are not satisfying. Okay, so that means some requests are satisfying the, the the criteria, and some are not. So let's do one thing. Let's do a plot. In this plot, what we're going to do? We're going to see how many times we observe the response time. Let's say this is in x-axis we have response time. In y-axis number of times we observe that data point. That means in set one, we observe one, two, so two times we observe one. So therefore, this is a graph. Okay. So therefore, this is a plot. So response time one is two times. Similarly, response time two is five times. Okay. Response time two. Similarly, if you plot all these things, so what you see, 
number of times you observe a particular response time and that distribution of graph is going to look like this. So this is your set 1, this is your set 2 and this is your set 3. So the point here is that even though the summary looks very same and just by looking at the summary we say that all things are ready to go but the moment you see this kind of distribution is giving a completely different story. This case in set 2, it looks like almost 10 requests are getting a response time of 5 seconds. Okay, so which is basically not what we intended to, 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 to find. Okay, so essentially what my point here is, so, so essentially what my point here is that average time can be very misleading. If you give your conclusion based on your average response time, then you are in big trouble. All right, and especially in this case that I showed you that it, it, it's a problem. So that is where we want to have another criteria. And that criteria is called 98th percentile time. 98th percentile response time. So what I'm going to do in the next video I'm going to explain you how to use 98th percentile response time to, to conclude that if the performance is, is good or not. But so the, the, the bottom line of this video is that don't conclude just by seeing this kind of table. So thank you very much and see you in the next video.